Hey everybody, it's Robert Cadenese again with the Chatham County Public Information Office and I want to thank you again for checking out this edition of the chat. So today, our today's guest, we have someone who's relatively new to the county, but she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to a topic that's really kind of in the conversation in today's community. She is the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Administrator she has a smile that will light up a room, <laughs> and she has my favorite name. So I want you to meet Freya Huffman. Freya, how are you? I am great. How about you? <laughs> I'm great good. to be here. Thank you for taking the time today. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to the county, and what you kind of did up to that point. Well, I, I love to start off that I am a native of Burke County, Georgia. I am a country girl, <laughs> I have to say that, but I spent most of my adult life in Augusta, Georgia, Columbia County area. Um, I went to college on a basketball scholarship and there I majored in math and computer science. I always say that because it is so far away from what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. uh, after working in manufacturing for 10 years as an IT programmer, business analyst, project manager, um, I always fell into training and I would always hear comments around, Freya, you're different from other IT people. Um, I love people. I like training. I love developing. Um, when I moved into another space in a HR and training and consulting, I earned a human resources certification. But at that same company is where I was introduced to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And it was odd to me coming from the government to actually have a, an organization that um, focused on business and uh, profits. Okay, but also wanted to include their employees in their decision making. And so that was the beginning of uh, employee resource groups, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I've been doing it for 16 years uh, at various companies, but really it was as an aside from my regular day-to-day -day duties as a mm -hmm. trainer, as a, an HR trainer and consultant, payroll consultant. And uh, in the last few years, uh, there were a lot of jobs coming out about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I was able to put together a resume showing that I've done this within companies I've done this in the community and again continuously for 16 years I've done this work and my last role was a global uh, diversity and inclusion leader mm -hmm. equity wasn't included uh, because people are I uh, like to say playing with the acronyms to figure out what's the best way to present it right you know let's jump in because I know that there's somewhat of a stigma attached to this topic um, but in your experience and your wealth of knowledge, when we talk about DEI, what do you feel the impact is to the county and what you're trying to achieve in the community? To the county, I feel that it is an opportunity for education around what DEI is. If you hear about it from the national level, the different states that accept it or uh, maybe say, no, we don't want to have anything to do with it, it's an opportunity for us to become educated about it. Now, they are three initials. Sometimes there are others, such as belonging, that's added to it uh, that really uh, are start, is starting to polarize people around, I don't want it, because mm -hmm. they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And many times we're fearful of what we don't know. And I feel that as DEI leaders that we have to do a better job of uh, sharing what it is and what it is really about, which is diversity. Diversity makes up, you know, the differences of us. There are different levels of diversity. There's our ethnicity, our gender. Uh, there's our there's our background, um, there's our education. There are different levels. And, and when I'm doing my training, that's one of the things I love to kick off with is, let's talk about the different levels of diversity. And so educating people there, instead of starting with what we see face value, is a great first step. After that, when we think about inclusion, we're thinking about, okay, yes, we are all different, but do I feel like I, um, there is a, a place for me here? That's a little piece of the belonging as well, but mm -hmm. included. Uh, do others feel like they're being excluded? And again, the goal is for us to uh, create a space where your ideas are uh, important, mine are. We, sh we talk about it, we discuss it. We may be on different ends of the spectrum, it doesn't matter, but we respect each other enough to have conversations and then again 
DEI, uh, the equity piece. Um, there are sometimes uh, uh, different parts of the world and even communities that may not have the, the same opportunities as others. Mm -hmm. uh, Savannah is a beautiful city. I, I love it here. I've always frequented here years over years, many times a year. Um, but we also know that like any other community, there are people that have and they have access to and those that don't. And so the equity piece is around that. And it doesn't matter what our background, ethnicity is. Again, when we talk about economics and accessibility, that's where the equity comes into. So you're, it, it sounds like you're, you're not at the 30,000 foot level. You're granular when you're, you're discussing this mm -hmm. and it crosses all socioeconomic um, communities. Mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, and we're going to get into specifics later like the one Chatham, but how do you feel it's being integrated in or implemented within since you've been with the county? Well, you know, I, I like to say I've been on a, a world tour around Savannah, <laughs> Savannah uh, and Chatham County, getting to know people, various departments. Um, before you can start to implement change or mm -hmm. a, a change mindset, you have to relationship, build relationships. So I call a relationship building 101. I need to get to know you. You need to get to know me. You need to understand my background. <laughs> so when you bring something to me, I can understand where you're coming from and vice versa. And so the way I've done it here at Chatham County is to uh, again get with the leaders to find out well what is it that you're looking for okay and then also working closely with our HR department because they are responsible for our talent and our talent development to see uh, again opportunities mm -hmm. to get plugged into various departments I've had uh, de department heads reach out to me Freya can you come train us um, can you come work with us so uh, Savannah Chatham County has been um, uh, j just really uh, on board with inviting me into their space. Mm -hmm. Let's have a conversation. I want to learn more. Can you work with my people? So there's a need there, which is what I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, working even with uh, City of Savannah's DEI leader as well, collaborating on some efforts. Um, so again, um, what I'm excited about here is we don't really understand it, Freya, but we appreciate you sharing what you know. Come share more. Mm -hmm. um, it, what does it look like? And, and tell us what we don't know. And so there's an openness there to learn more about it. So it's really Really about starting a conversation. Oh yes, for sure. How is this giving a benefit to everyone? Right, that's a great question. Um, because again, when you hear DEI, many people think about exclusion. Mm -hmm. Someone's being left out, and that is not to ca the case. Uh, it's giving a benefit to everyone by uh, bringing people of diverse backgrounds together to converse on uh, what does this mean and, and, and how does it benefit me. Uh, there are many studies that have been done over the years that talk about how diversity, equity, and inclusion improves uh, economics, it improves uh, quality of life, because now we care about people. Um, I just went to the Women Who Rules uh, or, uh, event there at the convention center mm -hmm. uh, this past week. And in that one sitting, all of these diverse people or diverse women were able to come together with one purpose, which was to raise money for transportation around $27,000 raised in a few hours. Wow. Okay, so thank God for technology. We mm -hmm. got the scan and you can send right, it right, right on the fly. But it was still the, the collective efforts of diverse people that cared. And if we can get to the, the, the foundation of caring, um, no matter who someone is, uh, this is how it benefits everyone. In the workplace, is there an opportunity for us to make sure we're creating uh, equitable opportunities for people to come into the workplace, but to move up? Mm -hmm. um, I was reading a, 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 a Lean In is a women's organization in McKinsey Report. They do a women in the workplace report every year. And it talks about the barriers that different groups face, um, even at the first level of management. So mm. while we may look around and we see a lot of diversity, if you will, um, right. but, but where does it uh, fall within the different tiers of management? What does it look like on the team? Um, and so when we say how does it benefit everyone, that's the conversation we have to have have in terms of what we want it to look like and how we're being fair to all. You know, what does um, your external plan for community outreach look like and how is that coming about? 
It looks like uh, getting out there, boots on the ground, going out, networking, meeting, being um, intentional about reaching out to organizations, uh, partnering with uh, uh, Lizanne Roberts, for example, and all the work she's doing, and then also Tara with the strategic planning and the mm -hmm. blueprint. That has really made it a little easier for me to get connected out in the community. And then once the word gets around, then it's, can you come over? Can you speak to us? Can you share? Um, and and, and really educating the community again on this as well. Mm -hmm. um, because if the community doesn't understand, they can't get behind something that they don't really get. Um, and and re-educating us, uh, um, taking us forward uh, with the inclusion, the message of inclusion. Um, working with the school systems, I've been getting it plugged in there. Um, as we know that a lot of our youth of certain demographics, a lot of times they are um, um, uh, in jail more than others. As when the first thing I came in when I uh, started working here is Crystal Cooper reached out to me, for example, mm -hmm. and said, hey, we got to have diversity training. From the courts. From the courts. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and she also allowed me to gain insight into just the, uh, just the I like to know demographics. I'm a numbers person. Mm -hmm. I majored in math and computer science, so I love numbers. And I wanted to see the data on who's being impacted. When we start to look at the root of the impact, then we can start to change and work with the schools to, uh, to, to, to make things better. I just got a, a restorative justice mediation um, certification, again, to start to work with children who are being kicked out of school. And here's what I, again, love about what Chatham County does. Chatham County wraps its arms around all mm -hmm. of the different groups to say, before we just, um, before we just throw you away, let us do something. They have so many intervention programs in place. And also, I've been spending a lot of time at the Sheriff's Department. I actually love it out there. I get to see, again, a great workforce that focuses on, yes, we know people have to uh, do the time, but while they're there, let us do something different. Right. Let us offer programs. Let us offer services. Uh, let us let them get a certification. That is beautiful mm -hmm. uh, because it, that is totally opposite of what the world does in terms of right. how we manage people that have gone through some things and made some mistakes. So Chatham County, again, is doing it differently. And that's how I've been getting plugged in through those different organizations. Have you um, reached out to the front porch? That is on my list. Uh, th I was they're on say my because list. They're yeah. really, um, you know, on the front lines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of a lot of what you just were talking about. They're uh, on my calendar, actually, for a meeting coming up. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us a, a little bit about the One Chatham Inclusion Academy that you developed. I was excited to develop this. I heard the, the, the chairman um, say, we're one Chatham. I said, I can run with that <laughs> because I know his goal is to bring everyone together right. to work together. And when I heard it, I said, okay, one Chatham. And I wanted to focus on inclusion. Again, we get stuck on diversity. Mm -hmm. Diversity will happen automatically if we focus on inclusion. Right. And so the Inclusion Academy is about, uh, I sent invites out to about 25 or so uh, Em employee leaders in the county and it is a diverse group and I had a great response we had our first kickoff meeting we chose an off-site location and um, and with one of our blueprint partners and uh, they gave us a tour of the facility but the goal was to bring us all together to kick off what we want this to look like I can do this work I've been doing it a long time you do this work better with others right and you do it better with diverse people and people with an inclusive mindset and so again the turnout was great about 85 percent people said well everyone said yes but for that kickoff meeting about 85 percent of the people showed up they mm. were very interested in what is this about and uh we're going to be going through a curriculum of diversity equity and inclusion um uh, they're going to get certificates at the end saying hey i am an advocate of this but this is what it's about mm -hmm. they're going to get educated around the language and the the best practices and the and and they'll be able to do even some of the work that i'm doing because i like to share caring is sharing as we like to say um and and so the whole goal is education advocacy and i want to also create the same thing for the county and have a county version of the community version of this as well you know the road to success always has potholes oh yeah what are some of the challenges that you think that you've already uh you know uh, come across or that you you foresee happening that you need to overcome Con education 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 you'll continue to hear me say that and people willing to listen and and, and understand this more and have that conversation, not run from the conversation. Um, 
the challenges I've had, I have not had many. And I know I'm an optimist, but it, it's also a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. It is my personality. I, I, you know, build relationships with people, and that's repetitive, but it's the foundation of who I am. One-on-one, -on -one, I want to know people. I want to know pain points. I, know, I want to know challenges. And um, some of the challenges in, that I foresee in the future is just the willingness to change, the willingness to think about things differently, um, the willingness to think about the way we re recruit, retain, and how we work with the community. Um, again, I am um, skilled at working through those challenges. I, I'm persistent. <laughs> I don't scare easily. <laughs> uh, I'll say it again, I'm a country girl. <laughs> and so I, I, I love, uh, uh, my mom just really taught us how to work with people of all backgrounds and, and, and taught us how to support people and to understand people. And in the workplace can be challenging. We spend a lot of time in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we come to work, we have to leave things you know, at the door, but sometimes you might bring it in the door. And, and how do we continue to encourage our people and create a, a culture uh, where people feel like, you know, I'm understood, I'm supported. Um, and so just continuing to work on uh, the mindset of, uh, I've been doing it this way, but can I be open to doing it another way? And and if I'm open to that, I'm not going to lose anything because I choose to think differently. Mama gave you wisdom and you got a lot of it. <laughs> Is there, you. Any, you know, I could talk to you all day mm -hmm. and I told you she had a smile that would light up a room. Um, Is there anything that I missed that you think is important folks should know, like maybe a parting message? Don't just listen to what you're hearing about DEI and what others think about it on the news. Uh, we see that it's literally being canceled in states surrounding us for various reasons. Um, people are proud of their backgrounds, no matter what they are. Um, we have to look at how we can come together and work together to find those commonalities. We have more in common than we have in, than that's different about us. Mm -hmm have meaningful conversations. Um, let us approach each other with a, a grace and a compassion to understand each other, civility. And we may be on the different, different sides of the fence or thoughts of something. You know, we do that in marriage. My husband and I don't agree on everything. <laughs> We're funny uh, that way, but we have a lot of things in common. So if we come back to that, if you walk away and you come back, and you say, but what are we really trying to do here? What's our goal? What are we right. trying to solve? Focus on, again, what makes us more alike than different. And then let's hold each other accountable. When there's an opportunity and we see that someone has said something that, that's not appropriate or, or someone has uh, done something, it's okay to hold each other accountable because we care for each other. We care about the greater good. It's not just about uh, my feelings, your feelings, your views, my views, but let's come together and continue to work on solutions. Again, that's what I see here in Chatham County. I was able to attend, again, the, the, uh, the affordable housing strategies. Mm -hmm. That whole session and that with everyone in there, and the whole goal was we were working together to solution. And if we continue to focus on that and learn to facilitate those conversations, which is what I want to help people do, learn to facilitate conversations, uh, learn to facilitate, okay, I see we disagree, and uh, let's think about it, come back. Uh, one thing I love about Amazon, uh, they have this saying that says, let's uh, disagree and commit. That means, okay, this is the idea, you made your piece, I made my piece, mm -hmm. okay, but I don't agree with it, but we're going to disagree and we're going to commit to it. And Jeff Bezos gives this example because his team, they wanted to do movies, and he was like, no, we're not in the movie business. We're not doing that. But he disagreed and committed, and they won like an Oscar. You can fact check me on that, but I remember that story. Mm -hmm. It's disagree and commit. Mm -hmm. I may not agree, but can we commit to doing what we need to do to move forward? And that would be the message I would leave. You are an inspiration and an, an awesome person to talk to, and I thank you for taking the time. Um, I know you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be very busy. Um, but I want to thank you again. Um, it really is a topic that I think needed to be talked about um, and maybe, you know, enlighten a few people on a different perspective on DEI. So for Frey Huffman, I'm Robert Katniss. 
We'll see you next time on the chat.